Coach, first of all, congratulations. Uh, uh, this is your second national championship. You've been, you've played for so many. Uh, you won one at Delaware. Now you've won one here. Uh, describe the feeling to us as we say hello to you. Hey, Paul, I appreciate you having me. And I, I just have an amazing group of young men. You know, I think there's going to be an asterisk nest to this championship, but in a good way that it might have been one of the most difficult things ever done with going through COVID. And then we're in a unique situation, Paul. We don't have a locker room. We don't have meeting space. My offensive staff works out of uh, the press box. My defensive staff is in a bank building about two or three miles off campus. And we lost our offensive line coach and our defensive line coach three weeks before the season started. So it was almost fitting that we had five rain uh, lightning delays and we had to come back and score 16 seconds left to go uh, in, in the season to win the national championship. So uh, just a, a group of very resilient men that have fought through so many little things. And what you realize is they've kind of have embraced just playing the game of football. You know, again, they don't have a locker room. They wash their own clothes every day. You know what I mean? So it's like the little things you just realize how important playing the game is. And we've embraced just playing football and they've, they're pretty good at it too. Coach, usually the day after a championship or, or the end of the season, you, you start reflecting back and it's been a long journey. We, we, we came to camp and, you know, four or five months later, but, but this has been a journey uh, of epic proportions. I mean, this began yeah. a year ago. Uh, I, I mean, you didn't know uh, when your season was going to be. Uh, let's, let's go back uh, to last spring, early summer, as, as we were all trying to figure out the, 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 the complex dilemma that uh, college football was dealing with. And then you found out your season was not going to be in the fall like it normally is. So, Paul, we leave for spring break, and then all of a sudden we find out that we're not coming back to school. You know, not only not coming back to finish spring football, but also not going to come back to school. And then so we start these things called Zooms. I never heard of a Zoom before. I mean, technology, Paul, is not my friend. <laughs> and so all of a sudden we're Zooming with the kids and we're trying to get them squared away. And, hey, we're going to come back June 15th. We're going to get ready for a season. And then when we found out that there was going to be a national championship held in the spring, all bets were off. We are not going to play in the fall. We're going to play in the spring because, you know, that's why they come here. They, they come here because I promised them that that's the goal of the program. We're going to do everything in our power to try winning a national championship. And so, you know, thank God I have the administration and I have an athletic director who's been a college football coach for 17 years. They were on board with, with the same mentality of, we're going to play in the spring because that's when the national championship is. We're not going to play money games in the fall. We're going to focus on the spring. And uh, so all of a sudden, then there's a chance that the way the fall was going, are we even going to get the spring going? So there's been a lot of emotional ups and downs. Every time I talk to another college football coach that is going through the spring season, they've said the exact same thing. This has been as physical and as mentally draining a season as any of us can remember because you get COVID tested three times a week and you're crossing your fingers every single time that uh, you, you finish a COVID test. Um, and then you get in the playoffs, and you know if you lose a guy, you got to lose him for the, the whole playoff. So it's uh, it was an interesting experience, and I think our kids persevered through all the, the opportunities uh, and challenges that were presented. And you've done so much in your career, and, and I, I'm, I'm curious. I mean, you've got now another national championship. You, you've You've accomplished things, and I, I know some some smart college football people have recognized you. Uh, but I'm, but uh, I mean, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not asking you what was me with with your accomplishments. But I am curious, though, uh, as you compare and contrast which which you've done with with what's going on down the street, where there are millions, uh, tens of millions of dollars at stake for coaches, and 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 they do have somebody washing the uniforms for them. Yeah, you know, I was in a unique situation. I signed a 10-year contract at Delaware. I was never going to leave. It was my alma mater. As my daughter has said to me many times, you have one dream job. Why would you ever leave that dream job? And then, you know, unfortunately, four months after I signed that contract, I find out that the institution, the people, the president and vice president who signed the contract, didn't think it was a good deal for them. And so now I'm in a situation where I don't ever want to leave my institution. It's, it's where I play. I bleed the colors. And I'm kind of dead man walking. And so when I was fired at Delaware, I thought maybe I'd never coach again. Um, and then, you know, I was out. I was working for ESPN and I was working for NFL Films. And I thought maybe commentating was what I was going to do. And I just missed the kids so much. I mean, I just love being around the kids and, you know, in a community. And, you know, Bobby Williams uh, at Sam Houston State said, hey, come on down to Texas. I think, I think it's a good fit. 
And uh, he brought me down here and he promised me that he would give me the resources to try to play for national championships. And uh, it's all worked out. And I'm very proud of, you know, Sam Houston State and, and my, you know, my newfound home and what they've, you know, given me in terms of an opportunity. Explain to the rest of us who, who have never coached, you know, what, what it's like to experience what, what you did not only yesterday, but every day, uh, something you truly love and, and you feel like you're giving something back. You know, I mean, I guess football is, is, is my vehicle. I mean, I see myself as a mentor. I see myself as a role model. I see myself as someone that is trying to teach these young men's lessons so they become better husbands, better businessmen, better fathers. And that's kind of how I was raised as a young man, you know, from my parents, but also in my football profession. I had Coach Tubby Raymond, who's legendary coach, one of the top 25 coaches in the history of college football, won three national championships. And he did such an amazing job developing a culture. And if you played in that culture, you bled those colors. You just believe so strongly that there is nothing better than being a blue hen. And so because I played for a guy like that, I think it's sort of what I've taken and what I brought here to Sam Houston. It's the same thing. I mean, there's nothing more important than, than wearing the orange. There's nothing more important than representing the guys who played before you. And, you know, one of my talks before we went out to play, Paul, was that, you know, we're we're in a quest for immortality. I said, I've been in, in, in the big house and they've won the national championship in 1901, 1902, 1903, and 1904. You know, I know that because those flags are flying in the big house, you know, over a hundred years later. This is immortality, man. For the rest of time, Sam Houston will celebrate the fact that this is the national championship team. And um, it's special. So I just love that quest for, you know, greatness. I love that quest, quest for being the best and it drives me and, and it drives my players. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.